Welcome back to CPCC Eclipse. In the last discussion board uh, video, we created Forum 1 in the demo course. In this video tutorial, we're going to review how to post messages into those discussion forums. If you're not at this point, if you go into your control panel of your course and go to discussion board under course tools, you can access the discussion boards for your course. If you haven't created one yet, watch the previous video tutorial. It'll show you how to add one under this plus forum button here. We've already created the forum one and we can modify it, change the title, description, things like that, availability under this modify button. If you have a half dozen forums and you want to change the order, this little drop down menu would have multiple numbers and you could change the order in which it displays. It's a graded forum when we created it, so if, if other students have posted and we're going to grade them on it, this is where we would go. We'll cover that in another video. You can uh, remove the forum, get rid of it completely, including all the posts and work. You can copy it and duplicate it using these options. Uh, we'll try to cover those in separate videos. In this one, we're primarily going to focus on adding our first post. If you click on the Forum 1 title, takes you into the discussion board. You'll notice it's completely empty. You've structured it and you've put it in place, but there's no content. Even if you described everything you want them to do in the description of the forum, we still recommend that the best practice is to add a starter thread. You want to seed the discussion. It's unlikely that students are going to come into a discussion board with absolutely no content in it at all and really be motivated to be the first person to post and really have that, that forum take off. So we do recommend that at least add a starter thread. Seed the, seed the discussion in the same way that if you've ever worked at, say, a cafe and they would have a little jar and they would put a couple dollars in it to seed the tips, you're going to seed the discussion to get the most uh, bang for your buck, so to speak. So click on the add thread. And just like composing a message or an email, you're going to give it a, you're going to give this a subject. So it could be something like what to do in this online whoops what to do in this online forum and then tell them what to do here maybe do a bulleted list for example um, read my intro fully write your own somewhat similar to mine. Respond with feedback to at least one other st student's intro post. So they have to read yours, assuming that you're going to post your own introduction. They're going to write their own introduction. They'll use yours as a model. And then they'll respond with some feedback to at least one other student's introduction. And again, you could remind them, this is a graded assignment that is worth 100 points, for example. Lay it out there. Tell them what to do. Tell them how to get started. You can attach a file. And I've used this a lot in my classes. You just browse, you click the link, browse, grab a, an mp3 file, and maybe maybe here you've narrated what it is you want them to do. Or maybe you're attaching a video that's, that's you talking. Um, just something kind of interesting to look at. Cancel abandons it, save it, and you come back and work on it some more later. Submit it, and it's live. We submit, and there you go. It's in the class. Now, from a, from a student's perspective, this is a student view, and I go to Discussion Board, and I go to Forum 1. Again, Discussion Board from the menu, or maybe they go under Communications, and then Discussion Board. Either way, they get there. They see Forum 1. They go into that forum. They see the topic, what to do, and they can read your message. So this is sort of like your, your forum you're in, the topic. Here they get some details, the file you attached, everything you want them to do. They can do a few things, depending on whether you've enabled them or not. They can vote on how good or bad they think this post or another student's post is. That's optional. You don't have to enable that if you don't want to. They can reply to your message. Adam, student 
here. So I'm at replying as a student, submit. They can look at your message and reply quoting it, which means uh, it actually includes the original message they're replying to in their post. So this right here would be student reply with quotes. We're responding and quoting the message. A lot of times when people do this, they don't include everything. They sort of say, you know, I'm not sure if, you know, does it have to be exactly like yours, for example. They're taking a, a piece out of what you're, they're quoting. Submit. All right, so I've, I, the professor, posted one thing. I have two student responses. So pull the student out of the way. Discussion board, looking to get it kind of updated. Again, if I was, I went through the control panel, but if I went from the outside, discussion board, go into my forum, I see the topic. These plus signs allow me to expand and collapse it. And then I can click on a response, see what the Adam student responded with. Adam with quote, response with quote. I can vote, give these guys some stars. Great question, you know, maybe I wasn't clear enough, we'll rank him high, you know. That's Adam's student here, that's not much of a post. He didn't really provide any content, one star. So, and again, that's optional. Um, I, the instructor, have the ability to, to pretty much do anything here. I can, I could uh, recognize that perhaps this post here was a mistake um, or maybe at my own topic I posted was a mistake I could check it um, and actually delete them and, and do different things like that I actually have the ability right here to, to remove Your students don't necessarily have that unless you enabled it under forum one I can collect one or more messages and remove it in this case we'll just remove one one of the little tips to save you some time if you have 50 topics and you want to get rid of them. I want to keep this one and this one. I want to remove that. But maybe I had 50. I want to get rid of all of them. I don't want to check 50 boxes. I can select all. Go. Checks all of them. I can unselect them all. Same way. I'll select the one I want to get rid of. I'll click the remove button. Gone. No problem. Um, you can sort of do the same thing. You can you can take message emails, uh, not emails, sorry, discussion board posts that you want to mark as sort of of interest to you to maybe come back and review later. You can check it and flag it, and that means maybe it's just a little highlighter indicator to you. You can get rid of the flag by clearing it. You can mark one as as unread or read, similar to what you would do in email. Um, you have two different view options: a tree option, which is what I like here and there's also a list view which um, is a little different it just lists all the topics and you have to go into the topic to sort of get the expanded information um, it's more of a preference issue for display I like the tree view but each person has their own preference on that um, one thing that people do like is the ability to collect messages if I have a, a very active forum and I want to see hypothetically two three four five six messages out of out of 40 I could check the boxes of the ones I want to look at and say collect and it puts them all together in just a single scroll so I just scroll down the list and and read those and can respond and, and do things like that so that's kind of a nice way to, to maybe get a cleaner view if you want um, that is mostly it for adding post. Uh, a lot of the options, the ability to vote, the ability to attach files, all that is dependent on how you set your forum up. So consider that when you set it up and tune back into the next video where we'll show you some more uh, ways to use this, some ways to grade it, some ways to uh, clean stuff out uh, if you're prior to the term and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.